There is a crucial step before investing time and effort on any project to start, but sadly, it is often overlooked by a lot of beginner artists, and this process is called greyboxing. So in today's video, we'll talk about the art of greyboxing, what it is, and how it can contribute to the success of your project, and many other questions like who's today's video sponsor. So gray boxing is the process of roughly blocking out your 3D project, whether it be an interior design, a landscape, or a game level environment. It is a rough representation of the project's idea without any additional details, just the bare minimum. It is mainly referred to as the first step in the development of a game level, as the goal of this process is to produce a simple replica of the final result that you wish to achieve. So a gray box needs to be playable and faithful to the final gameplay experience in order to make the right decisions and safely test the game concept. It is called gray boxing, but also sometimes it is called white boxing, referring to the color of the end texture through the object surfaces, generally gray, and in game engines, it is often a default gray and white checker texture. Of course, the boxing part refers to the most used primitive objects in the process, as the assets need to be as simple as possible for a quick result and not wasting a lot of time in a rough version. That's why the models used are often made with cubes in addition to cones, cylinders, and so on. In the case of game development, the only prerequisite of the art of gray boxing is that it needs to include all the main features of the game development that are mandatory for the gameplay to work just fine. For those who don't know about it, I think you guessed it by now. This concept has a huge importance in the game development pipeline and 3D art creation in general. It allows artists and game developers to quickly prototype and test gameplay mechanics and level designs before getting into the nitty-gritty process of creating the detailed assets, textures, and lighting. What makes it an essential part of the game development process is that it saves the time and resources as it helps identify potential issues early on in the production. So addressing these issues will not only be easier at this stage, but it also won't cost anything. Additionally, if you are a team working on the same project, it will serve as a visual reference in order to keep everything flowing smoothly and coherently between team members. So as you can see, gray boxing definitely has a great advantages that anyone can benefit from if it was taken seriously. Now. That we have established why gray boxing is so important, let's get into it and how to do it effectively. There are some key techniques and best practices that can help you make the most out of the gray boxing process, and we'll go over them next. Now, we can ask ourselves what makes this process so underrated within the community, and I can tell you that often artists are really excited about a new project and so hyped to start working on it, so they are tempted to start with the most intricate details and the most fun parts. And this can lead you to create something that is not coherent and lose track of the whole picture. That's why whether you are a 3D artist or a level designer, we need first to understand the goals and the constraints of the project. So it is important to set the time you have dedicated to it, and what is its goal or fine purpose. After that, you can start gathering references or even sketching by yourself a rough plan, including any key features, which leads you to determine what models you need and what are those you're gonna use the most and those that are gonna be the main focus. So you can create very simplified versions of the assets needed and remember what you need to keep it simple, because we don't wanna be lost in the details. You need to use simple shapes and placeholders such as cubes, cylinders, and other primitives. You can refine them later if needed, or applying plain colors to them in order to better fit the environment, asset by asset, video blackout assets kit that are gonna be used later on in the process. Also, building your small assets library will make it easier for you to later so quickly resemble everything to create the composition of the environment. When you are done with the modeling, you can start building your scene. A good habit to have is to always begin with the largest features, such as the terrain shape, the buildings, the roads, paths, etc., and then adding on top of that the smaller assets of your kit. Also, keep an eye on your goal without forgetting your composition. 
If you are working on a single render or a concept art, you can work with composition forms such as the roll of thirds by enabling the grid on the camera. Whereas if you are working on a game level, you can refine the gray box models as you go by adding more details, testing gameplay mechanics, and adjusting the layout as needed, which will allow you to identify any 3D or gameplay challenges in addition to issues you may encounter in the game development process and make the changes accordingly. Generally speaking, it is up to you how much you need to plan out and validate the elements and the different aspects of your project. You are the artist behind your ideas, and great boxing is only a tool that will help you visualize them and turn them into real projects. When it comes to the tools used in the process, there is no specific software that is best for great boxing. You can use any 3D modeling software available, preferably the one you are most familiar with. It could be Blender, Max, Cinema 4D, Maya, and so on, as long as it allows you to model basic shapes. And of course, in the case of a game level design, you will need to import your gray boxing kit to the game engine in order to test your final blackout and basic game mechanics. Also avoid any light bake at this stage. Remember, it is just a rough representation of your concept. On a side note, we can't talk about gray boxing without mentioning Blacktober, a game development community yearly event that has become emblematic with gray boxing. During the month of October, game developers from all over the world share their gray box concept, giving a look into the early phases of game development. It is actually an excellent opportunity for you to learn the process, demonstrate your abilities, discuss the different approaches, and learn from others. It's easy to understand why the event has grown in popularity in recent years. By sharing their work, creators may receive constructive feedback, allowing them to produce even better blackouts. On the occasion of Blacktober, Michael Barkley, a lead designer at Naughty Dog, posted a blog post about one of the Last of Us Part 2 levels he worked on. He provided a detailed breakdown of the level's gray boxing process, from initial concept art to rough blackouts and how the team iterated on the design based on the feedback and testing. He also discussed the challenges of designing a level that felt authentic to the game's world and story, while also being fun and engaging for players. The blog post offers a fascinating look at the development process behind one of the most critically acclaimed games of recent years, and it is a valuable resource for anyone interested in game design and development. Besides Blacktober, you can practice your blackout skills on your own by taking as reference famous level designs. So don't hesitate to share your work because feedback is one of the most valuable assets you can have in your learning journey. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel because it is free. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.